Now, Russia facing further economic isolation as European governments warn of more sanctions on the country. It comes after images from Bucha near Kiev showing mass graves and civilian casualties. Ukraine is accusing Russia of committing war crimes in their retreat from around the capital, and Russia denies killing civilians and says the images are fake. Now, for more, we're joined by Bloomberg's Maria Tadeo in Budapest. Maria, the international reaction to the very horrible graphic scenes out of Ukraine over the weekend, will they change the way that sanctions, that extra sanctions could be put in place? Yeah, well, Francine, we saw the international condemnation, particularly here in Europe. And as you said, the pictures coming out of Bucha are horrifying. The Ukrainians say they found mass graves, more than 400 civilians uh, dead at one point, reports of sexual violence. All of this clearly under international conventions would be war crimes. Now, we just heard from the French president today, in fact, this morning, saying we are going to assist the Ukrainian government in their investigation. It was a Russian army that was in Bucha. And there's very clear signs that uh, war crimes were committed. Now, to answer your question, at this point, Francine, we've seen the European Union now put forward four different sanctions, four different packages on the table. But the reality is, when it comes to the limits, they've probably already tested the limits of what very targeted sanctions can do. The big question now is energy. And ultimately, it will come down to whether or not they're ready to embargo Russian gold, coal, and gas. For the time being, there's been no majority around it. There's been no unanimity. But now the reality is, for European politicians, they have to match the tweet the condemnation with actual action. And one thing that to me was really striking over the weekend is that the political debate in Berlin is changing. We did see from a number of uh, German politicians, a number of economists suggesting ultimately we have to figure out if the cost yeah. of pulling the plug would suffice to put an end to this war, to shortening and shorten the sacrifice and the suffering from the Ukrainian people. And the answer is yes, and we should consider it. Um, Maria, Europe, of course, with threatening these new sanctions, though, how exactly would this package increase more pressure on Moscow? Because so far, you could argue it hasn't done anything, especially if you look at the pictures of those atrocities. Yes, Francine, and that was exactly the point, by the way, from Mateusz Morawiecki, the Polish uh, prime minister yesterday, who put out a Facebook post saying it is clear the sanctions are not working. The idea is that Russia would pull back the economic damage, would stop the war. The reality is, on the ground, we're seeing atrocities. And, of course, Francine, we need to remember uh, and remind ourselves that there is still an invasion going on. This may probably be happening in other places in Ukraine. So we haven't seen the full extent or the end of it. Now, in terms of what's in it. What I know, Francine, is that up until Saturday, European officials were working on another package that was small, that was targeted, and energy did not feature. Now, what you hear from the Baltic countries and Poland is that they want to call an emergency summit, and they say this time energy has to be on the table. But a lot of this, of course, will depend on countries like Germany and even this country where I am in Hungary, where Viktor Orban won yesterday an election and again repeated, we don't want to get involved in the war in Ukraine.